Week 5 has wrapped up in the NFL, so today we're going to share our biggest storylines and our overreactions. All right, we need to talk about the NFC West because it is the most confusing division right now, in my opinion. 100% agree. Last week, I think we definitely have a curse, saying the Seahawks are fine. Everything is the opposite they, we've been saying so they, far. They lose. <laughs> the Niners, I had no idea what's going on there. The Cardinals, like, at the end of the day, when we say they sucked, they somehow find a way to come back again. So, like, a lot of parody. The only one consistent thing is the Rams. The Rams, are the Lam- the Rams have And they should have technically lost that game that they beat the Niners in as well. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, the Rams have kept it like what close. Are you make- <laughs> what are you making of the Seahawks? Though? Making of the Seahawks. I think it's more so making of the Giants. In terms of like if Daniel Jones actually does play like mistake free football, they will be in every game. But on the other hand, yeah, you this is this is kind of what I expected from the Seahawks from the beginning. But here's the thing, right? There, there's these things where they like, you know, kind of blow these games away. The games sometimes they're they 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 have this situation where like they can't handle business in the last couple of seasons is what I noticed. Right? Even at games against like um inferior opponents, like they find a way to keep it close. And that's what they did again. And also, I mean, they eventually lost. the year off, they handled business. You gotta yeah. give them that, right? So this game, where I'm like, okay, the way they performed against the Lions without all that injuries, this should be fine. We'll touch on the Colts because they had a similar story where like decimated with injuries, but still should be able to win that game, right? And like, I do not like, I do not understand. Yes, I understand the game tying field goal. There was potentially like a hold or whatever that happened that led Isaiah Simmons, even though it was a freak athletic play by him to hit that game ceiling block and return for the touchdown there. They should not go to that point because here's the reason why. Yes, Daniel Jones has been playing well recently. This game, though, he did not have his biggest weapon in Malik Neighbors. There's no excuse. And he did not have Devin Singletary Bro, to help rely, right? Se- Seahawks were my lock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Seahawks were my lock. But... That that that's my point, right? Like I do not know what to make of this team. There, Gino, like Loki, is having an MVP caliber year. I'm not saying he's in the discussion yet. We'll do. We'll figure that out in the midway point. But like when you look at his stats, he has he's been good. He's quietly been because yeah, it's partially because it's Seattle and partially because it's Gino Smith. He's been and he's flirting in that conversation, like especially with the other guys like Derek Carr and them at the beginning of the year. But my, I like this NFC West in general. Like, they're still leading the division because let's talk about the Niners here. Unless you want to add something to the Seahawks quickly. Yeah, with the Seahawks, uh, Geno's kind of reminded me of the the year Dan Campbell's second year when they started off really badly, but Jared yeah. Goff was playing really well still. Yeah. It's kind of giving me those type of vibes where, like, he's low-key playing the best football of his career. <laughs> and I want, I want to say one more thing, too. I just thought of as soon as you said Geno there. DK Metcalf. He's having a good year in terms of, like, his stats, sure. But the one concerning stat is the fumbles. I yeah. heard that since 2022, I want to say, or something like that. He has the most fumbles. It can't happen as, as a wide receiver. Yeah, the one be. against Detroit, I think, I, I get it. He's fighting for yards, sure. But it's like, what, half a yard to a yard? Just It's better to keep the ball in that moment rather than risking losing it. In that case, he did lose it, right? So, they like, the carelessness of him, he needs to fix that. Like, I still think they're going to fight for the playoffs because clearly they showed that against... Like you said, against good teams, they make it close and they look competitive. And then the non-good teams, yes, they handled business, but this Giants game was inexcusable. They, they, because they reverted back to what they did the last couple of years in terms exactly. of keeping it close. Because that being said, let's talk about the Niners now because they're playing them in Thursday Night Football. This is their third game in 11 days. This is a short week, literally themselves again. And um, the Niners are coming off a horrible loss. So they're going to try to look... I'm more confident in them bouncing back than the Seahawks a little bit here because if the Seahawks are still going to be injured, we don't know the statuses at the moment. Uh, I think Leonard Williams came back. About it. Obviously, Nwosu, I think, was still out. Um, I'll, I'll look that up if I can here quickly. But with the Niners, though, the two losses they have, two of the three losses they have were very concerning because they were inferior division opponents. Keep in mind, division record will matter. If it does come to a tiebreaker, they're 0-2 at the moment. So this is a must, big, not a must win, but big game for them to at least get a win in the division but two lesser opponents be you want to come back you're you lose your kicker in this game listen don't get me wrong we build Kyler Murray's having an underrated year Marvin Harrison Jr. is in the rookie of the year conversation we said ourselves that watch out for the Cardinals there will be a, a good comeback team this year but to the point where like you lose control of the game because you lose your kicker and I get it which means you need to try to get super close or and Jake Moody's a damn good kicker you can't be like put, putting yourself in like panic mode, especially for a guy who's Kyle Shanahan leading the way. 
because you ended up making plays, bad play calls, Brock Purdy making not the you know putting him in the right situation, and then you uh, that game ceiling pick was inexcusable in my opinion. Like that can't happen. How much of it is like Christian McCaffrey? But to that, I'm gonna say one last thing: you still have enough talent now to offset that because you did I'm, well without Christian. I'm, McCaffrey I'm gonna tell before. you this right now. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, all these guys being out had zero effect in the results of the Niners game, right? Obviously, okay, they had some effect because they are damn good players. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But to the point that like it, it shouldn't, they should have won without them. They honestly should be four and one without all these players, with all the players they missed, right? Like you said, two comeback games against the Rams and against the Cardinals, inferior opponents. On top of that, it's not even a a talent issue at this game. It's just like, you know, an effort issue. They're not finishing games off. They're not finishing opponents off, right? They're letting them, they're not putting the nail on the clock. Yeah. As simple as that, right? And, and, the, and that Rams game and then this Cardinals game. Even if McCaffrey was there, even in the Rams game, if Kittle and Debo was there with McCaffrey, if they play like that, I don't think they're winning because again, they did not put the nail in the coffin, right? That's just, at the end of the day, is a thing that you got to do. No, that, that That's not a talent thing. That just like, you know, we got to finish these off. No mercy. Put these guys away and let's move on to the next week. There's, don't get me wrong. If McCaffrey and Kittle guys were there, they would they would definitely help just because obviously they're McCaffrey and Kittle and Debo. But, on, but the thing is this. this they're back now. Huh? <laughs> they're back now. Too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, two of them are back. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Like That's not a talent thing, right? Finishing games off. Yeah. It's not a talent thing. It's like, you know remaining focused, remaining concentrated and all that stuff. And every single player needs to do that, right? It's not just because, oh, you're missing one player, you know, that doesn't mean, oh, you lose your concentration and boom, you just blow your 14-point lead or your 21-point lead, whatever you had. My, my point is, you were good before Christian McCaffrey came. So, like, why? Like, it would be all the Niners fans saying, oh, well, we're missing Christian McCaffrey. You have one of the best play callers in the game. We're, I'm going to talk, bring the Chiefs up later in my uh, the end here, but... They they lost Rashi Rice, and we're seeing creative plays that they're making to make, and then using the players you have strength to help win games. Andy Reid in this case, right? And like I I don't understand because you're supposed to be the class of the league. Sorry, the the, the conference, even the league, one of the classes of the league, right? The only team that I could definitely have like you ha- we might have direct competition with how the season's rolling should be Detroit, right? Philly, obviously, we don't know what the hell is going on with them this year. There's a lot of question marks there in Dallas as well. For me, though, like, they need to figure it out ASAP. You're lucky. They, okay, listen, they faced adversity last year, and they figured it out pretty quick, right? So I'm not going to overreact yeah, by saying, the, like, oh, they're done or anything like that because their division is kind of weak because... Go ahead. I was going to say, like, I don't necessarily think it was a creativity issue with like Shanahan. I think it's more of a... Um, coaching issue, leadership issue, in my opinion, right? Because Reed and Spagnolo in the Chiefs side, you know, they at the end they they drill their players to like, okay, yeah. you know, you gotta play sixty minutes, you gotta, you know, put full effort in through the whole entire game. You can't blow leads, right? Even when the Chiefs left points off the board, they still were able to, you know, dominate the game because they were well coached. They were in it the whole time. That's the difference I'm saying between Chiefs and Niners. That being said, what do you very quickly? Uh, we're not gonna go on too long here. What do you think of the Cardinals at this point? Because that Washington loss was like, damn. Like, those two teams are the are big jump teams, especially in the NFC. We're like, it's going to be a good, close shootout. They got destroyed, and we're like, okay, because of that, we're like, oh, Niners got... That was like a kind of like a lock pick for a lot of people as well. Like, Was but that like, your lock pick? <laughs> I don't know if that was mine. Maybe, I think that, I'm pretty sure that was your lock maybe pick. Maybe it was. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we both messed up our locks. <laughs> how, like, was it just a blip? And then uh, for the Niners that game... Sorry, the Cardinals that game, that they're like, okay, they're still going to be a pest. Um, speaking of a team that will pull, give it your all, Jonathan Gannon's their head coach, how, how, and Kyler Murray's having an underrated year himself. Yeah, like, they're good, right? But at the end of the day, you could clearly see in those losses that they had against the Bills and the Commanders, it just shows that, like, you know, they are pieces away still. Yeah. Right? Like, even when they play really good, they just don't have enough on the defensive side to hold teams out like the, like the Buffalo Bills. And in the Commanders game, I just generally don't know what happened, in my opinion, personally. Because it just felt like none of them showed up in that game. But overall, like a two and three record is a fair record for the Cardinals right now. Yeah. In terms of like how especially we, with their wins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially who they be and also like what we expected from the beginning yeah. of the season. Like two and three is pretty fair. Since we're not gonna be pre- previewing this game since Thursday night football, just a quick yes, uh, pick a team. 
I'll go with winning. I'm, Seahawks I'm more comfortable with the Niners still right now just because not even that. I'm just looking at the recent matchups between Niners and Seahawks. The Niners were able to make Geno Smith very uncomfortable. That's the one team I believe he struggled with a lot, right? Even in that playoff game a couple of years ago, the Niners were able to get to him. So that's what that's why I probably feel more comfortable with the Niners. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Niners too. I think the injuries there are more, uh, are going to hurt them. We'll see what the status of those, all those guys, especially in the D-line, are going to be like. Let's move on, though, to the AFC. A big matchup that we did preview. The Bills-Texans, the team that to challenge the Chiefs as the second-best team in the AFC, started off very bad for the Bills. Um, their defense, however, kept them in this game. Josh Allen did not, like, the opposite happened. We had him in MVP conversation last week as the MVP favorite. Put up a stinker for his standards, 9 for 30. Um, but they managed to come back, tie the game, and uh, horrible play calling at the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, time clock management at the end to the point where you let Kaimi Fairburn win the game. Your overall reaction to that ending play with the bit, like, with three pass plays and uh, Sean McDermott uh, ultimately electing with or Sean McDermott, Sean, uh, Joe Brady electing with pass plays that led to... Uh, yeah, no, this is on this loss is mostly on McDermott and the coaching yeah. staff for sure. Like, uh, obviously, your team was able to come back. As much as Josh Allen struggled, he was one of the reasons why they were able to come back. Obviously, James Cook the defense. got going. And obviously, defense, yeah, did hold them out. The best defensive game probably of the year. Yeah, um, because, yeah, Stroud against was... The, Stroud. Against competition. Stroud did for uh, turn the ball over again, yeah. which was uh, surprising to see. <laughs> seeing Stroud turn the ball over. But overall, like... McDermott was doing good on the defensive side of the ball, but again, clock management, there's just little mistakes that they made in this game that kind of obviously costed yeah. them. And obviously, I just don't understand, even because you're backed up so much in your end zone, you got you got to get some space. Yeah, so his excuse just was they had three timeouts anyways, they're going to call it. But to the point is, you still put pressure on them on the clock, right? You're going to run the ball. You would hope they would get past the uh, whatever yard they were on and maybe go up to the 10 it's not yard. Even, yeah, like, it's not even that. Like, you got to get, like, two, three yards away from your end zone just because exactly. like, you don't want Josh Allen scrambling in your own end zone. And then you right? get, you're giving the ball to CJ Stroud, who has shown that he's an accurate quarterback. And then fair bear. With three timeouts, with one of the best kickers in the game who could hit 50 yarders, like, no problem. Bro, that was, that was clean from, like, 64. Yeah. Right. It was a 59 yard field goal. That would have been good from 64. It was going wide and turned wide left and ended up going right, which is fine. But yeah. um, because of that, they're three and two. And we said last week the concern with them is can they beat these good teams to make us comfortable? Two weeks in a row um, did not look okay. Well, their defense looked great in this game, offense didn't. The other side was flipped. Um, but for the most part, I'm not going to repeat myself, but we know what they need offensively. They need a weapon. And there are people available like Adams and Hopkins or whoever they want. Yeah, the biggest difference between the Bills, the first three and the last two, is because of the adjustments the opposing teams were able to make against Joe Brady and the lack of adjustments he made. Because in the first three games, he was doing, and the Bills team is in, around them, the Bills players around Josh Allen were doing their best to like you know help Josh Allen. But these last two games, it felt like it was more on Josh Allen's shoulders and a go be Superman type of thing. And it's kind of very hard to do that when uh, your pressure rate has not been good the last two weeks because I think it was 40% both the games, above 40%, which is the highest. Each game, it got higher and higher, right? And because of that, because their own line is not living up to it, right? Josh Allen has been facing more pressure and it's going to be more on Josh Allen. Speaking of a team that needs Jamal Devontae Adams, the New York Jets. Who needs them more? The Jets or the Bills? Bills. It has to be the, and the reason why is the, I'm, re- I'm I'm not hesitating on that. I said it last week. Um, even though I'm gonna um, go back on my comment a little bit, saying the Jets don't need Adams, I think they still need Adams for this reason. Because in this uh, for the Jets, yes, I still blame play calling a little bit. However, his Rogers chemistry with no, uh, the other guys are not is not great. Like that game ending interception was terrible. Like they were on different pages. The couple of plays, even though this is Garrett Wilson's best game with Rogers. They were not on the same page in the first half because I actually watched this game. I woke up because Man United were playing and I had I had this game on in the back. I'd rather watch this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my, the point is, like you're, they're not on the same page. So the only reason why I think they need to get Devonte Adams is they've been the one of the best quarterback wide receiver duos in the NFL for the last decade or so, right? Because he was the best wide receiver. He was a top two quarterback in the yeah, league. To, um, to add to your point, that connection is very important because right now, the Rogers' best weapon has been Alan Lazard, yeah. who was also in Green Bay, 
who also built that connection exactly. with Rodri. And he still has more connection with Devontae Adams. And Devontae Adams knows like how he throws the ball. Like he does the quick throws. He's Back one, of the, throws, he's one yeah. of the best in taking care of the ball. So it's kind of unlike him what he's been doing these last two weeks, especially. But to answer your question, but again, it's the Bills very easily because they need the weapon. For me, the Jets' other bigger problem outside of the play calling and maybe the, the familiarity, the O line. Right, like Rodgers is now hurt. He has a low ankle sprain. I don't know what grade it is yet. He's ho- or hobbled. Literally, he got he was about to wear the blue tent, and there was a roughing the punter uh, penalty, so he came back on and led to that touchdown drive. Um, but but the problem is like he's not being able to stand upright uh, on certain plays. Like same yeah. with Josh Allen. So both yeah, had yeah, both, issues both, that way. Yeah, both are hobbled so right now. But the, the, the big, one has better weapons though. Yeah, so that's true. why I'm saying the Bills yeah, need a better. But weapon. but the, there's there's another big thing. The big difference between the lines right now, right? This line, the Bills line was able to help out James Cook for most part of the season. We haven't seen an Brees effective Hall has Brees not Hall. been yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. We have not seen effective Brees Hall. Part of it's on him, and part of it, again, is on the run blocking as well. But yeah, that being said, if I'm the Jets, go go get Adams ASAP because this is your window. <laughs> like exactly. Right this is Rodgers window. could retire after this year. And you don't know when he's going to retire. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, but speaking of the Jets, who they played, the Minnesota Vikings, we have to talk about them 5 0. Oh. I don't care. They're undefeated. Say what you want to say. The defensively, they were good. However, uh, if we were to pick up downside of it, Sam Darnold is kind of regressing a little bit. So I don't know if it's just the Jets defense because the Jets defense yeah, did keep them in the game. It is tendencies, right? Um, we're seeing some of those old habits that Sam Darnold has been with all the all his turnovers that he have made. But also, again, we have seen we have also seen some good throws. The biggest tendency for Sam Darnold, where he's reverting back to his old habit, is forcing throws. And keeping was, the ball too long. And keeping the ball too long, yeah. But the forcing throws, there was no need for that interception to, or throw to me made. It was a tight window throw. You're in the lead, and you gave the you you gave the Jets an interception, which allowed for a touchdown to Garrett Wilson, put him back into one possession game. Uh, but there was also something good. Obviously, Jefferson in the first half, first quarter was uh they were cooking the offense, the Minnesota offense. Yeah, they cooking. were up seventeen nothing again. Believe. Yeah, but like. Uh, we're seeing more concerns now at the last couple of weeks for sure. But overall, they're finding a way to get the job done. And that main credit does go to this Vikings defense the last couple of weeks with, with their ability to force turnovers, three interceptions, I think, in back to back games. And my, I think Love threw for three and obviously Rodgers threw for three this game. Yeah. So they're they're turning the ball over. Gilmore's back, baby. Yeah, <laughs> Stefan Gilmore's back. But again, it's just like um keeping again, McDonald's doing a great job of Putting Darnold in great great situations. This offense has been really good, but there are just some things that you still got to work on. You're still really seeing the old Sam Darnold in terms of forcing the football and, like you said, also holding it for holding on for too long as well. Um, go, uh, going back to the NFC here, very the NFC South. So we're five weeks in. Stuff has flipped outside of the Panthers. <laughs> they're, they're staying the same. Who's winning this South division? Because the Buccaneers and the Falcons just had one of the game of the year candidates, along with the uh, the Ra- Ravens and Bengals. Um, the uh, the Saints just lost uh, to the Chiefs on Monday Night Football with question marks at Derek Carr's health as well. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? Like when you look at it each, and if they all play to their potential, right? It's gotta be the Atlanta Falcons, right? Uh, because the biggest piece of evidence is the Thursday Night Football game. The Buccaneers, again, yeah, they were missing a couple pieces like Winfield and like they had also some injuries there defensively. But when you look at it offensively, like that was peak Buccaneers, right? Like Baker Mayfield was incredible. Yeah, he was right. not the reason they lost. Yeah, like he, the offense was incredible. Mike Evans got his touchdowns. Godwin was involved, right? All these guys were involved. Tony Shepard got a touchdown as well. And then the flip side, when you're looking at the Atlanta offense, right, they were they're firing on all cylinders. And uh, Atlanta's a team that won. So that's the biggest piece of evidence. When Honestly, a little bit bad gamesmanship at the end, too, <laughs> that led to overtime that should not have been going to overtime. Um, I forgot what what the play was. They correct through the pick. Yeah. And then just how they lost yards for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was a big thing, too. Yeah. yeah, they lost yards, which was obviously forced them to punt. Instead of punt, yeah. So like it could, should have been a field goal. Instead but the of thing is punt. this, right? Like, the biggest thing is, like, both teams are basically almost firing on all cylinders, and Atlanta's the one who came up on top. Yeah. So, like, that's... That's the biggest piece of for, evidence for me that's saying that if every if all of these three teams are playing at their potential, for me, it's still Atlanta. But then again, obviously, um, the Saints are on a three-game losing streak now, right? They lost to better, but they lost to Atlanta as well. So right now, Atlanta has a division on lock in terms of the division record. 
in For, terms of the thing with Atlanta, the five weeks. that's scary is their defense hasn't been fully unlocked. And, my, and that's Raheem Morris' special, right? Like, this past game, week, it was more so the offense that helped carry the win. But but the week prior, it was the defense. That yeah, so that's what offense. I'm saying. So both team, both units have not been clicked together. Clicked together. Yeah. And if that happens, and they're, with their schedule being the easiest out of the three teams, exactly. in my opinion, along the way, yes, this is based on the prior, prior uh, before the season started. However, I still feel like it's the same way. They should have this division on lock. For me, Tampa, like like I said, this surprised me a little bit that I didn't expect them to be this good. They they have been good. Um, once like, but again, Kirk Cousins, two, what two out of the three um primetime games? Sorry, is this his third primetime? No, yeah, two out of three because he let it come back in the Eagles. He let it come back in this game as well. Um, it helps that Drake London is showing that why he was that first receiver picked on we the. We finally saw something for Pitts. And we yeah, so we got Pitts going. It's the only question mark for them now is Bijan to be consistent. And um, for me, the um, Kirk has shown like he could actually lead a drive in clutch moments in when the whole world's watching him. Yeah. Um. Recently, his primetime record has been way better. Yeah. I think he's like ten and eight in his last eighteen. Like this is the Kirk we saw before yeah. injury last year. Yeah. Like, exactly. Guy, he cooked this game. Yeah. He asked like five hundred yards. Like what yeah. more could he ask for the guy? Like he did his absolute exactly. job, right? Like um. And what he was supposed to do. For me, the Saints, though, um, I, again, we'll see what happens with Derek Carr. He, he was started off hot. Let's see what Clint Kubiak does because we were praising the first two weeks and the last three weeks haven't been the greatest. Like, the Eagles game wasn't good offensively. Um, last week, they lo- lost to the, the Falcons as well, even though it was a closer game for sure. Um, see, the other thing is they have a clutch kicker, even though Ku did not have a good game overall, but he got the clutch kick when he needs to on both sides. And then this game, yes, he played the uh, Chiefs. I'm not blaming you, but when you play a good defense like the Chiefs, you have to try to find ways to win. But defensively, with all the weapons they're missing, and this is more on the Chiefs than we alluded to it earlier and we'll get to later, they need to definitely try to flip the script here because right now, they're third in the division and they're two and three. Yeah, three, three, and, yeah, three and two. Three and losing streak right now. The biggest thing with the Saints is like, the their offense has been that explosive play, right, to Rashid Shahid. And they got another big touchdown on Monday Night Football as well. But overall, after that, it hasn't really been great. Again, Alave was a non-factor. And uh, you... Their inability to just sustain drives, right? Like, it's a little bit inconsistent. Like, they have the big playability, right? And obviously, we saw that the first two weeks, too. And we saw this game with Sheed. And we saw, yeah, a split, the spirits of this game that drive after the the big man interception. Um, sick interception. Sick interception. I don't care. That guy <laughs> was running. Was it Saunders, I believe? Saunders, was, yeah. yeah. Um, again, they, were, they got those points off the turnover. It's just that they just lack some, I guess stability on the offense in terms of again their offensive line hasn't not the greatest but I think they could still get the job done they could play a little bit better but it just they can't find other ways to win in my opinion on, on when you're looking at the offense they can't find other ways to score and the big reason is because Olave has been shut down all right let's get on to our quick reaction quick big overreactions here a new thing we're going to add here quickly since we are in week five well I'll start off I alluded to earlier the Chiefs and my overreaction, my takeaway is they might not need to go out and go big game hunting and get a big wide receiver name, a.k.a. a DeAndre Hopkins, a Deontay Johnson, and to a very lesser extent, a Devontae Adams. The reason is the creativity that Andy Reid shows offensively and then their defense still being the, I don't know, a top five, in my opinion, probably the best defense so far in the league with what Spags is showing and the creativity he shows on defense as well. Granted, they lost like the, their big corner in uh, uh, the Jerry Sneed in the offseason as well. Um, they are still the best team by far in the NFL. Um, right now, I don't think there's any team close to them. So, I, I don't know what else to say there. I don't know if yeah. you add anything to that. For, no, I mean, I agree with the, what you said. The biggest thing is they got Travis Kelsey going as well, which yeah. kind of like eliminates the those issues as well. Do they, it, okay, yes or no, simple. Do they need to get another wide receiver? To win the Super Bowl this year, do they need to? No. Should they? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's it. We'll just keep it there. Yeah. Uh, for me, the Cincinnati Bengals will miss the playoffs. For coming into the season, I had the, these guys as a playoff lock, guaranteed. And coming off one of their best games, especially on the offensive side of the football, putting up 38 points on the very good Ravens defense, 
Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins all look like the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins we expect them to Joe be. Joe Burrow is like quietly an MVP conversation. Yeah, again, like it but can't be because he's one and four. Yeah, uh, the the biggest issue is they already dug. Did I think this year is the year where they dug themselves too deep of a hole to climb out of? And yes, they do have an easier schedule because they did finish fourth last year, so they were facing off against against lesser teams. But the issue is. You already played many lesser teams than you in terms of like the commanders who are actually honestly killing it right now, the Panthers and obviously the Patriots, and you're you're one and two in those games. I mean, in, in realistic, you're supposed to be three and zero in those games. So they're already blowing opportunities. Um, Zach Taylor again should be gone. Their DC should be gone because uh, again their their defense has been letting them down. And overall, the. Again, Burrow can carry. Jamar Chase can carry. We know this offense can carry. But th- it just feels like this year is like, you know, yeah, you played with too much fire. Here's the thing. What they've showed so far, I'm going to add this very quickly. They play to the opponent's level. So, exactly. which means, yeah, as good as the commanders are now, this should be the better team. As good as, um, and then they played well against the Chiefs and the Ravens, to be fair. Because they played against their they level. They played to yeah. their level as yeah. the Seahawks. But they lost those games. Unlike the Seahawks, they won the games that they should have won. And then these two, to the Patriots and um, to the Panthers, they end up losing, right? The Commanders. Command. Uh, uh, they beat the Panthers. Oh, yeah, sorry. They beat the Panthers. But even then, it wasn't like a very... It wasn't convincing. Yeah. Like Dalton so Baltimore, that being said, if yeah. they have an easier schedule, what does that say then? They're going to play to their level. So it's going to be like toss-ups at this point. But like they already have like a bunch of the easy part done. Yeah. yeah they only yeah. played two tough teams. So we'll see, how, we'll see how that ends up going. But... Let's uh, move on to a very our last one and a collective one because this one it hits home and we're not gonna try to ramble on too much. It is that Gus Bradley needs to go because Will Levis will probably have a 300 plus passing yard game next week. It's the biggest point of this defense so far in week one against Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon Mixon rushed for his third highest career rushing yards in a game. Uh, second, uh, the second week. The first quarter against the Green Bay Packers was the most rushing yards by a team in like forever, right? And they almost matched their franchise record in um, rushing yards in a game in in one half. half. Yeah. The third week, Caleb Williams throws for a career high 300 yards. Obviously, his career has been very short, but it was vastly improved for the week, the first two weeks that Caleb Williams showed. Week four, Justin Fields throws for his career most yards in 300 something. And then again, week five, the defense was a reason why we lost to a winless Jags team and they had Trevor Lawrence throw for 371 yards and Tank Bigsby rush for two touchdowns for, I think, 20 plus yards each and one being like an 80-yard touchdown. So <laughs> that being said, I mean, the trajectory and shows Will Levis will have his career game. And then the one last thing, each of your wins, the wide receiver... Opposing wide receivers had over 100 yards in pickings. Brian Thomas Jr. and uh, I believe Roma Dunze. Well, we lost the Brian Thomas Jr. one, but yeah, no, but like I'm yeah, saying, yeah. Like, their wide receivers had over. But yeah, so yards as well. so that being said, like I get it, there are injuries everywhere. So I blame still, I still blame blame um, Chris Ballard for the lack of depth on the secondary side of things. I'm fine with the lack of depth not now. The depth is still there to the, for the line to do well. Gus has got to go. I said this last year. I was not... I mean, yes, the first year when the Matt Ryan year, he was okay. Like, he stepped up a little bit. But we had playmakers and Stefan Gilmore and them. So that's where I look at Ballard. Yeah, talent, that yeah. The, and these last two years, like, there's no reason why on second and 20 or whatever in their own end that Trevor Lawrence is able to throw that big play down the field. to I think it was Ryan Thomas Jr. And I, I think that... I, don't I know think that it was that, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis, whoever... Led to like the big gain. I don't think it was a touchdown, but it led to a big, uh, big gain that ended up being a touchdown. Every time the offense, when Joe Flacco finally got the offense figured out with Shane Steichen, got going outside of the one play where we ended up finally tying it, we got a stop. They immediately responded, just like that. And when you needed to have that big stop, you let them go down the field and hit the game. When, when you look at the Jaguars' drives, right? Yeah. A lot of two play touchdown drives, one play touchdown. Drive, yeah. Right. Like I don't understand the fact that you play so conservative in your scheme, and you were still gave up so much, so many explosive plays, which I just simply don't understand. Once upon a time, you're one of the best defensive minds in the game. The game has clearly passed you. There's a reason why Wake Martindale's not even in the game uh, in the uh, uh, NFL anymore. You got to look at what Steve Spagnuolo is doing. 
And uh, that's like, the first one that comes to my mind. Robert Sala. Say what you want about the coaching side of things. At least the defensive side. He's had the Jets on lock there. He's got they, he's stuck in his ways. It's very predictable. Um, when we've seen blitz packages and all that, it was worked. He's not he didn't use that this thing. Our pressure rate in general was low. How much was that on the talent? How much was on like, Gus? Obviously both. Um, There's also injuries online too. <laughs> true. Well. But that being said, like uh, we could go on and on. Our last overreaction to end off the week yeah. is that Gus has got to go because Please even with the wins, he's the defense looked good. But still, stat wise, please retire or like <laughs> honestly, just make it easy for us. <laughs> like, you're done, man. You're finished. It's as simple as that. So I'm giving him one more week. So my overall, oh, reaction, you didn't give him one more. Oh, Steichen's giving him one more week. We don't give him. That's one what more I'm week. saying. Yeah. So I'm giving him one more week. St- yeah. Steichen's giving him one more week. Slash Ballard. Ballard. Slash Ballard's giving him one more. But week. that being said, uh, that, that ends week five. Comment your guys' biggest takeaway so far down below. And um, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and the post notification bell. NHL, NBA content coming soon and NFL content uh, twice a week as well. Hit this. Um, also, follow our socials link down below for all the shorts and TikTok content. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.